going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Kevin Jackwitz. This is The Case Review and this is a review for WWE Raw. And this is for Christmas Eve, 12 24 18 And, you know, I, I gotta say, Raw is not looking any different. Uh, I'm gonna really quickly go through all of this. You start out with your typical Miracle on 34th Street fight. Something they do virtually every year. It's your stupid gimmick fight. But I will say, Elias and Bobby Lashley did some cool things with the fight. One of them being Bobby Lashley picking up a present that was filled with Legos. And so they dumped the Legos all over the ring. Bobby Lashley gets tossed onto the Legos eventually. Um, which had to be painful. I don't give a shit. Those things fuck. Those things suck. Um, and they had some other cool spots. Uh, Elias pulled out a bowling ball from one present. Rolled it into Bobby Lashley's crotch. Uh, smashed a violin over him, or not a violin, a viola, and uh, yeah, so they did some cool things with the match, but it's still your basic gimmick match, and I, I mean, I don't know, uh, I have to give them credit for kind of the creativity, so I, I'll i say it was good and not necessarily bad, uh, but not necessarily very good, it was, it was there. You get a Heath Slater promo saying that he wants Rhino back, and then that starts like a whole bunch of superstars talking about what they want for Christmas. Um, next actual match is Bobby Roode and Chad Gable versus Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder, The Revival. They absolutely killed it. It was a really good match, honestly. And I think it got the crowd really popping, too. Uh, eventually, Roode and Gable won. Um... I don't know that I had a favorite in the match. I like the revival for sure, but it, I was just happy it was a good match, and it definitely was. And the revival's getting a spot now, which I like. And honestly, Chad Gable's a very, very good performer in the ring. I think. Uh, more Christmas list from superstars. That kind of happens on and off throughout the show. You go into a Dolph Ziggler iPhone promo. Um, Oh, and you have the NXT call-ups. That was right before the Dolph Ziggler promo and the NXT call-ups. I'm, I'm actually going to make a separate post about what I think about these NXT call-ups because I'm actually very opinionated about it with this big change they got for WWE. Uh, so Ziggler promo says he's going to win the next match. Triple threat with him, Finn Balor, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre comes to the ring first after commercial, and he does a real quick in-ring promo. And then it's a triple threat match, and it... It's good for what it is. I, I liked it. Uh, again, I don't know if it was great, but it definitely got you entertained. It kept you involved. Uh, Finn Balor eventually gets the win, and then Drew McIntyre gets in Dolph Ziggler's face after the match. Uh, says he's tired of him, you know, screwing things up for Drew. Dolph Ziggler eventually hits the zigzag on him. Then you get a Vince McMahon promo in a Santa uh, a costume, and he says next week it's going to be Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler in a steel cage, and that he is bringing a women's tag team division, which I think is cool. I really like that. So women's tag champions are coming. Uh, after that, you get Mickey James, Alicia Fox, and Dana Brooke. They take on Bailey, Ember Moon, Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks, Ember Moon, and Bailey get the win, and then the Riot Squad come out and attack those three. And of course, the Riot Squad standing tall at the end. They're trying to establish now the tag teams. You know, Sasha and Bailey have kind of been this team they were talking about for a while. Riot Squad, obviously a team. So they're already trying to set that up. Uh, Paul Heyman comes out next. He's talking about um, Brock Lesnar going to dominate, of course. Uh, during the Royal Rumble with his match with Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman comes out and, I mean, all he really says is, I got a message for Brock Lesnar, tell him he's going to get these hands. And that was the end of that segment. Um, honestly, it, it wasn't Paul Heyman's strongest. Uh, he came out singing a Christmas carol that was geared towards, you know, Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman, obviously. So, it was all right. Backstage, you get a Natalia interview. Nothing much, saying, you know, friendships aside, she wants a title. 
Um, talking about how it's been a rough year for her, which I'm sure it has. And then you get the match, Natalia versus Ronda Rousey, and the whole play here is Ronda respects Natalia, doesn't want to hurt her, she's not going full tilt in this match. And Natalia is, because she understands it's the women's championship. Eventually, Ronda Rousey fires up at the end, she puts Natty in the armbar and gets the win. They hug afterwards, everything's cool. Real quick backstage, Dean Ambrose promo. Seth Rollins is taking on Baron Corbin. And, you know, Dean Ambrose is saying, basically, I hope your Christmas sucks and uh, you lose. Essentially. Uh, Heath Slater takes on Jinder Mahal next. Jinder Mahal, of course, with the Singh brothers. Uh, and Jinder Mahal started losing, getting his butt kicked. The Singh brothers come in. They start beating up Heath Slater. And then Santa comes through the crowd, jumps the barricade, and uh, takes out the Singh brothers and Jinder Mahal. And of course, it turns out to be Rhino. Then Charlie interviews Seth Rollins backstage. Seth Rollins, you know, says he's going to take care of Baron Corbin. And the last match of the night is the weak point. And this is a problem that WWE has. Like, you've already sent Baron Corbin off on a pay-per-view. Then you sent Baron Corbin off on Raw, literally an entire show's worth of send-off. And now you have Seth Rollins basically trying to put the exclamation. It's three weeks in a row. Part of the reason Raw sucks is they keep utilizing people that don't have any talent. And so here you are. You've got Baron Corbin in the main event again. And... I wasn't impressed. I mean, what more can you say? There's literally nothing to be gained by this. Seth Rollins gets the win and it was a weak finish. Um, overall, it was a fun show. I mean, I thought they did as much as they could with the Miracle on 34th Street fight. It was entertaining, but stupid, if I'm being honest. Um, I liked the Tag Team Championship match. I liked the Revival. Killed it, for sure. So did Bobby Roode and Gable. Um, the triple threat was fine. Uh, I wasn't really big on the women's match. I guess I just wasn't invested. Um, and they did have a couple of matches that just felt thrown in there. Uh, although Heath Slater and Jinder Mahal, though it was, it felt thrown in there. It actually had a point in bringing Rhino back. So I, I'm, I won't get too hard on that. There was actually like, okay, Rhino's back. Um, but overall, I mean, it was slightly above average, but not great. So I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. I feel like that's fair to it, because it did have some good stuff to it, and they did try with some things, but it definitely had some weak points too. And honestly, you know, it might be overly nice, but I, I guess I'm just, you know, used to the crap that they've been serving us, which has been terrible. So 6 out of 10, they did okay. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. My name is Kevin Jackwoods, Cage Nation, out.